In this episode, we're talking about the award-winning and critically acclaimed documentary President, which follows the controversial 2018 presidential election in Zimbabwe. Here's director Camilla Nielsen on filming in this dangerous arena. By then, everybody just kind of took cover behind a car or a tree or whatever we could find and deeply traumatized afterwards by, 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 by what happened. And I know that a lot of my colleagues had the same feeling. I'll also be speaking to film producer Seenberg Sorensen and Patricia Chinyoka from the Women in Zimbabwe project. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. I'm going to get that gun of mine and I'm going to change you from a rooster to a hen with one shot. Some people call me a freak. I hate that word. I don't believe in it. Better yet, I don't believe in labels. You know, I think you're the only girl in the world that can stand on a stage with a spotlight in her eye and still see a diamond inside a man's pocket. Because I'm up at five every morning working my ass off. Does someone want to just tell me to my face you're never going to give me the scores I deserve? Hello and welcome to Girls on Film. I'm Anna Smith and this episode is in partnership with Final Cut for Real, the production company behind the new film President. Directed by Camilla Nielsen, President is a riveting documentary, reminding viewers that while individuals and their specific ideals may differ, the fight for democracy is never ending and has profound significance everywhere. With the country in economic crisis, longtime Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe is ousted in a 2018 coup by then Vice President Emerson Menegawa. Prior to the ensuing and bitter election, 40 year old lawyer Nelson Chamisa steps in as opposition leader. Chamisa faces death threats as he's forced into hiding. Election foul play is suspected, results are delayed, and protesters hit the streets. You defeating Emerson and Mungaba. That would be an electoral upset on that kind of scale. Can you really see yourself pulling that off? Of course, I'm ready for it. I mean, I'm, I'm more than ready. I feel the energy. So that would change our pain. And is it? The pain. The pain. The pain. First up to discuss the film is the director, Camilla Nielsen, who brings viewers into the centre of the struggle for power in Zimbabwe with stunningly close access and unwavering courage. Well, Camilla, welcome to Girls on Film. It's lovely to have you with us. Um, congratulations on President. Thank you, Anna. It's nice to be here. Well, before we get stuck into the film, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your past work? I'm trained as an anthropologist. I went to New York University and studied film at Tisch and, uh, and used my anthropological studies as a different approach to storytelling than a journalist approach. I've been working in Zimbabwe for the past 11 years. I made a film called Democrats Before President, which was a story about uh, when Zimbabweans wrote their first democratic constitution while still under the rule of former President Robert Mugabe. Robert Mugabe has survived the alleged plot to oust him as the controversial clause that would have barred him from serving more terms as president has been revised. Presidential term limits will now only apply to future presidents who will be able to serve a maximum of two five-year terms. I mention this because President is, uh, is a sequel to Democrats and came about as a result of making Democrats. Democrats was filmed uh, over three years and edited over two years. And by then, uh, Mugabe had signed the new Bill of Rights and it all looked like we were having a happy end to the movie. But then three months later, he blatantly stole the next election and decided not to implement the new constitution. And that led to also a banning of our film Democrats. It was banned in Zimbabwe. And, uh, he didn't want the people to see it. It was banned as pornography, which was quite a harsh category for a film about a constitution-making process. That's weird. <laughs> yes. Well, basically, it meant that in Zimbabwe, it would be pornography was illegal at that time, and it would be illegal for Zimbabwean citizens to have a link or a copy of uh, the film about the constitution-making process. Long story short, basically, some of the lawyers I had met in the filming of Democrats, some of the finest constitutional lawyers in Zimbabwe, felt that it was absurd, even idiosyncratic, to ban a film about a democratic process. And they wanted to use the film to test the level of freedom of expression in, in Zimbabwe. So we, we challenged the ban in the Zimbabwe courts, and it was a three-year process. 
And in January 2018, shortly after the fall of Robert Mugabe in a military coup, a very courageous judge uh, unbanned the film. And it was in connection with the hearing of that court case that I came back to Zimbabwe for the first time in, in three years. I had been on a blacklist and not been able to enter the country. But I was given a permit to to come and, and, and be witness to my own uh, court case. And since we won the court case, we went out for a celebration dinner afterwards. And it was during that dinner that some of the protagonists from Democrats suggested that, I, I you know, Mugabe was gone. There was a presidential election coming up. It was the first election in Zimbabwe with a, without Robert Mugabe on the ballot paper. And uh, they suggested that I come back and do the sequel and tell the story about this historical election. And that's basically the, the story about how president came to be. I said no, actually, during that dinner uh, for, for, for many reasons. First and foremost, because I was in the middle of another project. Uh, I had just developed and financed a new uh, feature documentary, and we had just started filming that. And uh, the idea of dropping that movie and, and coming back to Zimbabwe, I didn't think it was, it was possible in terms of, of funding. But also, I think being a known critic of the regime of the current government Robert Mugabe was replaced by Emerson D. Munangakwa, who is the current president in Zimbabwe. And although he was talking about a new dispensation and, you know, the birth of a new democracy, I didn't quite believe that. And so I felt having made Democrats and having been in a legal battle with the Zimbabwean ruling party for three years, it might not be the best idea to embark on a new project. On the flight home from Harare, I, I realized how much I missed the Zimbabweans' friends I'd, I'd made. I mean, we spent three years filming Democrats and you obviously create deep and lasting relationships with people when you make films like this. And I don't think I realized how much I missed these people. And so the invitation to come back, I decided when I landed in Copenhagen that I would discuss with my producer, was there a chance of coming back to Zimbabwe and follow the, the election and putting that other project uh, on the back burner for a while. And and she worked miracles and, and made it happen. And, and thus we made the film. Well, I'm glad you did. It was absolutely riveting. And you have incredible access. How did you and your team achieve that? Well, uh, the team that filmed President is the same as the team that filmed Democrats. Uh, and the team is just uh, me uh, as, a, as the director. And I also do production sound. And then I have a wonderful cinematographer, Henrik Ibsen. And the two of us had been on the ground for three years filming Democrats, um, had been in and out of the country, I think, 12 times over three years. The end is coming. It has happened elsewhere in history. I know that the system ultimately cracks down and the dictators go. Mugabe is not going to last for long. So we were already uh, known by the Zimbabwean op uh, opposition who invited us to, to make president. And I think uh, the access we got in, in president was basically based on the fact that we, we you know, they, we were trusted already. For me as a filmmaker, it's, you know, we, we, we got our filming permits very late in the process. It, there was only four weeks until election day itself, when we got the, the official permits from the government to, to, to make president, which was very little, for an observational filmmaker, was very little time to, to get acquainted with, with everybody. It's obviously a very politically sensitive situation that we are filming. But I think the trust we gained during the making of Democrats guaranteed that we could just kind of switch on and start recording on the first day. And, and I think it's the first time I filmed a project like this where scenes and materials shot on the first filming day ended up in the final film. Interesting. So you went straight on in there. Yeah. Straight on in there. And, and wow. the only thing, we, we couldn't have made president without having made Democrats uh, before that. There are some terrifying and gripping moments in this as a viewer. Were there moments that scared you? in particular, when you were filming? Well, obviously, the events that took place after the election day itself, there's been a history of rigged election in Zimbabwe. The opposition was very worried that that would happen again. There would be a repeat of that. There were all signs that there would be a repeat of that scenario. And when the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission took days to release the official results, there was speculation from the opposition party that there was... Uh, rigging going on behind the scenes. There was a 
large group of international observers present for the first time in, in a long time observing the uh, election. And they also started worried on day three, four, where's the results? They could have been announced, you know, on day one or day two. Other results were were, were coming out from, from for the, the parliamentary election had been posted, you know, days before. And it's the same counting process. So there was skepticism and suspicion that things were, were, were not going right. And a young group of opposition supporters took to the street to demonstrate in front of the hotel where the electoral commission was was placed. And uh, on August 1st, 2018, the International Election Observers gave a press conference where they supported the opposition and basically said there's basis or a reason for concern here. Where are the results? Why are they not being made official? And we went to film the uh, press conference with uh, both the EU team of observers and the US team of observers. And when we came out from that press conference, basically what was started as a small demonstration became a full-blown uh, volatile situation where suddenly yeah, we heard the military helicopters above our heads and uh, the army took to the streets in, in, in tanks and shot live ammunition, ammunition at both the uh, demonstrators but also at the international media present. When I heard the first shots popping, I thought it was tear gas, but my, my DP Henrik has filmed in war zones before and immediately identified that this was live ammunition. And uh, by then, everybody just kind of took cover behind a car or a tree or whatever we could find and deeply traumatized afterwards by, 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 by what happened. And I know that a lot of my colleagues had the same feeling. I'm sorry you had to experience that firsthand. It's deeply saddening just simply to watch. Um, how do you get up and carry on? What drives you after such a terrible experience to keep making films? We came to film a presidential election and we came with an open mind to the new dispensation that had, had been taken power after uh, Mugabe was ousted in a military coup. I think maybe we naively thought that it wouldn't go this bad. So we didn't come with either, you know, bulletproof West or helmets or anything like that you would usually bring to a war zone. So we were totally unprepared for the scenario I just described. Um, I think we were in a state of shock. For, for a time um, and just kind of operated on adrenaline. As you see in the film, the final result when it came from, from SEC, the Zimbabwe Ele Electoral Commission, it, it announced Idi Monangakwa as the president-elect by the people of Zimbabwe, but the opposition didn't trust that result. There were so many indicators that this result was not right. But the fact that there were identical results from 16 different polling stations is a statistical impossibility. Uh, so, so, so the opposition didn't trust the official result and decided to challenge that in the courts. And from that point, the narrative of the film goes for what looked like a sort of a civil war scenario into a court case drama. And it was a much more mellow filming environment. Since we followed the election from Nelson Chamisa, the opposition candidate, and his campaign going to the rural areas, and we sort of, it's, it's, a, it's a process film. You can't finish it without finishing the process. So we stayed in the country for another month after also most of the international media had left. And the final four weeks following the court case were, were much less adrenaline driven and, and much more mellow, but important for us in order to complete the story. <laughs> I'm here for a fight. We are ready for any consequence until we have a free and fair election in Zimbabwe. Well, very important and very fascinating once again watching it. And as you sort of hinted there, it, it, it just beggared belief. I couldn't, I was, I was staggered at the, the kind of ridiculous position that they were taking and expecting people to believe it. Yeah, as you suggest, the film really took me on, on a journey of many sort of different genres and moods. Um, now, obviously, we're a, a feminist podcast, so I wanted to ask you, as a female filmmaker, do you think there were additional challenges that you faced um, making this particular film? Yes, in a, in a sense. Well, as you see in the film, uh, the politicians that we are filming, the, the, the leaders of the opposition are mainly male. I think there's a scene in the film where the opposition leader, Nelson Chamisa, visits a group of students basically to get their feedback. You know, if we're about to embark on a new constitutional democracy, what are your wishes for a better Zimbabwe? And there's a very brave young girl who gets up there and kind of gives a good answer to your question. 
And she says, Chamisa, you see there are very few girls here around, very few women present at this hearing. And the reason for that is that we are afraid. We live in fear. I think Zimbabwean politics is a very rough scene for a woman to be a part of. Three young, brave feminist youth leaders in Zimbabwean politics, Joanna and Cecilia and Netzai, known as the trio, who has been vocal about the situation. And in 2019, they were abducted and were tortured and left behind a, a, a supermarket on a parking lot. They are now still on trial two and a half years later. And the claim is that they have themselves staged the abduction and the torture in order to shine a bad light on the new Zimbabwean dispensation. And they have to report to police station three times a week. They've taken their passports, almost an unspeakable situation for for me to talk about. But I haven't been able to uh, include more women in my stories, which is a a great loss and, and comes with a big, big sadness for me. Well, talking of feminist, uh, Tandiwe Newton is, of course, uh, executive producer on this project. Um, when did she get involved? Well, yeah, Tandiva, um, as a declared feminist and human rights defender, contacted me after our premiere at the Sundance Film Festival earlier in January 2001. She'd seen the film. Her mother is Zimbabwean. These are issues that are very close to her heart. And she coincidentally making a film with a Danish filmmaker friend of, of mine um, who I worked with before. And she gave me a call and basically said, I've seen your film and how can I be involved? And of course, knowing her and knowing the authenticity and legitimacy with which she can speak about these issues, it was a gift to our film to get it out in the world. I mean, it's a two hour long cinema verite film about uh, an election in Zimbabwe. And it's it's in, in, in certain circles, it's a commercial circles, it can, it can be a bit of a hard sell. And so to have Tandiva on board, to be able to open doors, open the conversation, reach a different following than my films usually do, we obviously embraced her offer talking about the importance of this film and and getting the story out. I mean, it's a story about an election that was stolen from a people who had been ruled by a dictator for decades. And I couldn't say how important it is to me as a witness and a filmmaker to this story to just get as many viewers and as large an audience to this story as possible. And and Tandiwa has been instrumental in us getting the story out. Well, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are going to seek it out very soon, having listened to your compelling words. Thank you, Camilla. Finally, what's next for you? Well, we are still releasing the film. We're on the Oscar shortlist. And so right now it's it's still a lot of uh, press work and, and, and getting uh, the story to, to an audience. We have an upcoming broadcast on the BBC beginning of February. And we are playing currently at Dock House in the UK. So I'm still fully engaged with, with getting the film out. And I think once we finish this work, I'll take a six-month break from filmmaking. I feel that I've been so deeply engaged in the Zimbabwean story for more than a decade that you could say I felt maybe I've been in a bit of a rabbit hole in the process. I think during this time, we've seen almost like seismographic changes. I mean, we are living in unprecedented historical times and things are changing so much and have been changing above my head while I've been engaged in the Zimbabwean situation. So I think I, I I need to to take a break and sit back and listen and read, think about what my next project will be. And uh, end of next year, I'll, I'll embark on a new story. But for now, there are no plans. Best of luck with President. And thank you so much again, Camilla, for joining Girls on Film today. Thank you. That was director Camilla Nielsen. Next up, I'm joined by inclusion, equity and diversity consultant Patricia Chinyoka. Patricia is a communications secretary for the Citizens Coalition for Change in UK and Ireland, which is the opposition political party in Zimbabwe. She's also the founder of Women in Zimbabwe, which supports women's startup projects in the country. Discussing President alongside Patricia is the film's producer and co-founder of Final Cut in Real, Seenberg Sorensen. Welcome to you both. Welcome to Girls on Film. Could you introduce yourselves and explain your connection to President? My name is Sine Bure Sørensen. I'm a producer, producer of President. Uh, I'm from Final Cut for Real in Copenhagen, Denmark. Patricia Chinyoka, I am a spokesperson for the Citizens Coalition for Change, which is the opposition political party in Zimbabwe. And I'm affiliated to this film as a citizen of Zimbabwe and very much interested 
in the events that happen in the country as I live in the diaspora. It's a real pleasure to have you both here. Seen, we've spoken to Camilla about many of the challenges of making the film. What were some of the most rewarding aspects for you? I think the most rewarding uh, aspects of being involved in this film has been the enormous uh, wish for and struggle for democracy in Zimbabwe that we witnessed doing the film. This struggle is up against such an enormous repression by the current government. And despite of that, people actually fight on and young people move forward and dare to speak their mind and uh, people dare to be election observers. And that kind of bravery in terms of democracy, which I believe is the foundation for our society, it's an incredible privilege to be allowed to witness that as as a filmmaker and uh, for me as a producer. Patricia, um, obviously you're a supporter of this film. Um, Can you talk to me a bit about your reaction to it? I think it was raw. So as I sat there watching the events unfold in in front of us, I I realised the the level of brutality that is perpetrated against innocent citizens, particularly those that fight for freedom and, and democracy. It was gripping. It was a true capture of events as they unfolded, which future generations can watch and learn about the cost of fighting for democracy. It's history in the making. It's a masterstroke. It's, 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 it's genius. It captured the injustices perpetrated against the people of Zimbabwe. And this is something that we would never have otherwise seen had an independent filmmaker not been there at the time that this happened. And, and I think that independent filmmakers care enough to tell our story. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. And you were at the premiere, weren't you? How was the atmosphere at the premiere in the UK? It was a, a electric. People were, were so, so happy to come and, and watch the film. And I think what the film did was in some way remove some of the myths around the actual reality of what goes on in Zimbabwe, particularly for opposition politicians. They are people that believe uh, that there are no injustices. They they think that it's just a story that people tell to to change government. Um, And so it it was shocking for them. You could actually see cinema goers coming out and shaking their heads. But there was also relief that this story is out in the world um, and that when people have watched that story, that they can go away and do something about it. So there's some action that people are taking. It's not watching it uh, and then going home and forgetting all about it. It's sparing people to do something. Today is a day of mourning. Mourning over democracy. It is a black day. You mentioned it's history in the making, and of course, history is constantly changing and shifting. Um, Would either of you like to speak about the development since then, perhaps most recently, the current situation in Zimbabwean politics? Despite the current regime repeatedly voicing their commitments to human rights reforms, Zimbabwe remains highly intolerant of basic rights and, and peaceful dissent and free expression. Political opposition leaders and other critics of the government are arbitrarily arrested, they're abducted, they're beaten, they're tortured, and there's little or no efforts to bring those responsible for the abuses to justice. And what we are seeing currently is that the army, the police, and state agents systematically torture suspected protesters. So anyone that is protesting and speaking out against the government. We have three young females that were arrested uh, back in May 2020 following a peaceful protest The situation in Zimbabwe hasn't changed. There's high levels of corruption. We are looking forward to by elections on the 26th of March. That is already marred with rigging, with interference from the opposite, from uh, ZANU-PF, as well as the state agents uh, and the police. So there is going to be violence. Um, and, and, And it's really sad to note that the challenges continue in Zimbabwe. There was also an attempted assassination on President Chamisa, who is the president of the Citizens Coalition for Change. So we have started a new party on the 24th of January. We are no longer the MDC Alliance. We've moved away from the past. 
we are now a, a new formation and, and we are currently facing real challenges to nominate some of our members to stand for parliament and, and, and also council positions in the upcoming by-elections. Those who believe in change, the world are in our own And also, may I say congratulations um, for being shortlisted in the documentary category at the Oscars. Thank you. And it feels like this is exactly the kind of film that needs to be recognised in that category because it's reach, it needs to reach a lot of people, this story, doesn't it? Absolutely. And and I think that it's it's extremely important for Zimbabwe, but it's also a story that has importance all around the world because we see struggles for democracy so many places. The US is a good example. We just had the 6th of January, one year anniversary of what happened there last year on Capitol Hill. And there's struggles for democracy in, in Hong Kong, in other parts of Africa. In, in Europe, there are undemocratic forces at play and so on. So I think this is also a film that talks very much about or shows how democracy functions and what you need in place in order to have democracy, how it's important to have an independent press, how it's important to have an independent judiciary, how it's important to have independent institutions that are in charge of the election and who are not run by the ruling party and so on and so forth. So in that sense, I think President is telling a story that also is in, in many ways universal. The Zimbabwe story that's been told through the president, which is actual events that happened and were captured on camera, is that Zimbabwe is now a case study on which other countries can learn from in order to, to help themselves fight for that change, to ensure that the institutions are impartial and not partisan. So the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission has not demonstrated independence or impartiality, and they delayed the announcement of the presidential result in 2018, which led to the protests on 1 August that saw the army kill six innocent people, the police, the state agents, and all institutions are state captured. Patricia, I was saying that um, you're a very inspiring woman and we have lots of women um, who might be keen to get involved, to, to sort of engage in activism further. And um, what would be your message to them listening? I would appeal and encourage all women, particularly women from the Zimbabwean community, to come forward and, and to get in contact and to come to be a part of the citizens that unite to help the cause in Zimbabwe. And there's so many ways in, in which we can do that. And for example, young women, we are so keen for them to come forward. As an older woman, I've been a politician for over 10 years in a senior role. And I think that's a lot of knowledge, advice and guidance that I can impart to others as a role model. So we need everybody to come. We need many voices because we can't do this. Uh, alone. And I think it's important that women can participate in politics because we've been asked the question why there were not many women in the president, particularly in the decision making. Uh, so we want the women to come forward and to participate. There's so many positions, there's so many roles that people can come and do to fight for that change in Zimbabwe. And they can find you online on social media quite easily and get in touch. Yes, they can find me at Chinyoka P, uh, and then we can direct him to all the various branches that we have around the UK and Ireland. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And seeing what would be your message to the girls on film listeners? I, I think my message would be that uh, I would encourage young women who want to do documentaries all around the world in Zimbabwe, in African countries, and also in the rest of the world to, to do so and uh, and to collaborate across borders. Because I think also President is a, is a film that could only be made by collaboration. Camilla was building on a foundation of trust that came through all her work with her previous film, Democrats, and collaborated with a lot of people in Zimbabwe. And that's, that sort of filmmaking where we, we collaborate across borders, I think that's that's extremely important. And in Denmark, there are a lot of very, very good female directors, but also many female producers and now also cinematographers and sound people and editors and so on. And I'm sure that there are women, talented women all around the world that they, if they wish to do the same, get in touch. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for joining Girls on Film. Congratulations again, Seen, on the film president and, um, and to you both for the wonderful work you do. Thank you so much. 
You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. President has been shortlisted in the feature documentary category for the 2022 Academy Awards. It's in UK cinemas now and it's available on BBC Storyville, 10 p.m., 9th of Feb 2022. Girls on Film is an HLA production brought to you by executive producer Hedda Archbold, audio producer Cam Griff, intern Shania Pithia, and our partners for this episode, Final Cut for Real. I'm Anna Smith and I was joined by Seenberg Sorensen, Patricia Chinyoka and Camilla Nielsen. Thank you, lovely listener. Stay safe. These guys are making Mugabe look like a saint.